everybody. Today we're going to learn about addition and subtraction of fractions. So you already know how to add and subtract numbers and you already know what fractions are. Today we'll learn how to add and subtract fractions. Just a reminder, the number above the line in a fraction is called numerator and the number below the line in a fraction is called denominator. If the two fractions have an identical denominator, that is the same denominator, then you only add the numerators and the result, the sum, has the same denominator just like the two fractions. Never sum the denominators, only the numerators and only in case the two fractions have the same denominators. During this lesson, we'll also learn what to do in case the fractions have different denominators. Just patience and everything will be clear. So let's see the first example. We have four over six. We also see it here in a visual mode. This is a, a pie or a cake. It helps in understanding uh, what we're doing. So four over six, we have six portions here and four of them are marked as if they are ours. And now we are going to add one over six. So we have four and we're adding one. Obviously, as you probably guessed, the answer is five over six. And the way that you calculate it, if you don't have the visual mode, if you see that the denominators are the same, and this is the case in, in this case, six, so the result will have the same denominator. And you just need to add the numerators. Four plus one is five. This is very simple. And you can also see it here. You had four portions of the pizza, four slices, and now you get another one. So you have five out of six, five over six. Now let's do the same with subtraction. We have four portions, four slices, and we subtract one. So obviously you guessed that the uh, result will be three. And again, if you have the same denominator, the result will have the same denominator, and you just need to subtract the numerator. So four minus one is three. And you can see it here. However, the result must always be simplified or reduced. So three over six is not simplified. You can divide both three and six by the same number, which is three. So if you divide three by three, you get one and six, if you divide it by three, you get two. So the result will be one over two, which is half. And you can also see it here on the right, half. So if you had four over six and you reduced one over six, you get three over six, which is a half. Let's see another example. Two over five, two fifth, you can see it here also, plus one over five, one fifth. So you have the same denominator, so the result will have the same denominator, which is five, and you just sum the uh, numerators. Two plus one is three, so you get three over five, and you can see it here as well on the right-hand side. Now let's subtract two over five minus one over five. Again, the same denominator, you'll have the same denominator in the result, which is five, and you just subtract the numerators, two minus one is one. So two over five minus one over five is one over five. You can also see it here. You had two portions, one was subtracted, you're left with one. Very simple. Another example, three over eight, three eight plus two over eight. See it here, three and two. 
So the result will have eight as a denominator. And you just sum the numerators. Three plus two is five. So five over, over eight. And you have it here on the right hand side. Let's subtract it, 3 over 8 minus 2 over 8. You can see it here. You had 3, 2 were subtracted, so you're left with 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. The denominator is the same, of course. 1 over 8 is the result. If the two fractions have different denominators, you'll need to look for a common denominator. Common denominator is a number which can be evenly divided by any of the two denominators. You need to find the least common denominator. That is the smallest number which can be evenly divided by any of the two numbers, by both actually. So it has to be divided evenly by both numbers separately. Note that you need to look for the least common denominator in addition of fractions and also in subtraction of fractions. So it's not only in, in addition. 2 over 3, you see 2 thirds here, plus 1 over 4, 1 quarter. You need to look for the least common denominator, that is the number, the smallest number, which can be evenly divided by 3, and it should also be evenly divided by 4. Which number is the smallest that you can think of? So there are a few techniques, a few ways to calculate it, to know it. The first one is to go over the uh, multiplications of each one of the numbers. So multiplications of three, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, etc. to write them down and to do the same for the second number, which is four in this case, so four, eight, 12, 16, etc. And the first number which appears in both lists is the number that you need, the first number. So in this case, 12 can be evenly divided by three, and it can also be evenly divided by 4. So this is your number. If you don't know, you don't, you don't feel like doing that, just multiply the numbers. But I suggest that you first use this way because it's better. In some cases, the multiplication will give you a higher number and there is a smaller number. We'll see an example of that. So in this case, we'll use 12. It will be our denominator least common denominator and now what you have to do is to divide 12 by 3 and multiply it by 2 and then do the same to the second fraction so you need to divide the least common denominator by the first denominator and multiply it by the first numerator and then do the same divide the least common denominator by the second denominator and multiply it by the second numerator and sum it. So let's see how it goes. 12 divided by 3 equals 4 and then we multiply it by 2. So 4 times 2. And then 12 divided by 4 is 3 times 1. So 4 times 2 plus 3 times 1. The sum of it should be over 12. Again, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then we multiply it by 2, by the numerator of the first fraction. And then do the same to the second fraction. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. That's the 3 that we see here. And then we multiply it by 1, which is the numerator of the second fraction. So now we have 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 3 times 1, which is 3, of course. So the result is 8 plus 3 over 12, which is 11 over 12. And you can also see it here on the right-hand side.
So two thirds plus one quarter is 11 over 12. One part is missing here. Now let's do the same with subtraction. Two thirds minus one quarter. Again, it's the same thing. We need to find the least common denominator. In this case, it's the same. We already know that three and four, their least common denominator is 12. We don't have to do it again. But if we didn't have all this, we would have to run this again, find a list of multipl multiplications of three and then of four, or multiply them. So we get the same thing instead of adding them, we need to subtract them. So eight minus three is five, five over 12. And you can see it here on the right hand side as well. Five over 12. This is the result of two thirds minus one quarter. You see another example, four over nine plus two over six. You can see it here as usual. The least common denominator of six and nine. Well, we can use the same method as before, the same technique on the multiplications of nine and of six. And we get 18 in this case. 18 is the number which can be evenly divided by nine, and it can also be evenly divided by six. So this is one way. Another way is to multiply them, which will give us 54. 18 is smaller than 54, so 18 is better. We need the smallest number, the least common denominator, smallest number. There's another technique here that may be useful in some cases. We can separate the um, uh, denominators, each one of the denominators, to its own factors. So 9 is 3 times 3, and 6 is 3 times 2. Now, if we see a number which appears in this side and also in this side, we can use it once and just multiply all the others. So we see three appears in this side and in this side. So use only one of them and multiply all the others. So three times three is nine times two is 18. Just another technique of finding the least common denominator. denominator. Just find the number which appears in both Places and don't use it. Don't be confused with the three times three here. So three, let's take this one, the first three here. It appears here and here. So we don't use this one, but we will use this three. So three times three times two is 18. That's another technique of finding the least common denominator. Bottom line, in this case, the least common denominator is 18. 18 divided by 9 is 2 equals 2 times 4 equals 8. And 18 divided by 6 equals 3 and then times 2 equals 6. So you need to divide the least common denominator by the denominator of the first fraction and multiply it by the numerator of the first fraction and then add to it following, divide the least common denominator by the second denominator and multiply it by the second numerator. So we get 8 plus 6, which is 14 over 18. This fraction has to be simplified. As you can see, these two numbers, the numerator and the denominator, both can be divided evenly by 2. So let's do that. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 18 divided by 2 is 9, so it's 7 over 9. And you can also see it here on the right-hand side. Let's do the same with subtraction. 4 over 9 minus 2 over 6. Again, we already know that the least common denominator is 18. 18 divided by 9 equals 2 multiplied by 4 equals 8. And 18 divided by 6 equals 3 times 2 is 6. So 8 minus 6, which is 2. 
2 over 18. And again, it must be simplified. Let's divide them both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 18 divided by 2 is 9, so we get 1 ninth, 1 over 9. What happens if the sum of the two fractions is greater than one? In such a case, you get an improper fraction. An improper fraction is a fraction whose numerator is greater than its denominator. You need to convert the improper fraction to a mixed number. A mixed number is also called a mixed fraction. We'll see. A mixed number is a number which has an integer, it's a whole number, and a simple fraction. 5 over 4 is an improper fraction. Because 5, the numerator, is greater than the denominator. Another example is 8 over 3. 8 is greater than 3, so this is an improper fraction. You need to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number. 1 and 2 thirds is a mixed number. It has an integer, which is 1 and 2 thirds, which is a simple fraction. 2 and 5 over 7 is also a mixed number. 2 is the integer, that's the whole number, and 5 over 7 is the fraction. So let's see some examples. 6 over 7 plus 3 over 4. Again, we look for the least common denominator, which is 28 in this case, 7 times 4. So 28 divided by 7 is 4, times 6 is 24, and 28 divided by 4 is 7, multiplied by 3 is 21. 24 plus 21 over 28, which is 45 over 28. So now we separate the 45 according to the denominator. We look for the multiplication, the greatest multiplication of the denominator, which is less than or equal to the numerator. So in this case, it's 28. And we subtract 28 from 45, we get 17. And now we know 28 over 28 is 1. And the rest is 17 over 28. So in this case, 45 over 28, we get one from here, which is one, and the remainder is 17 over 28. So the, the result is one and 17 over 28. You can see it here visually, that's a whole pizza or a cake or whatever, plus 17 over 28. Now let's see another example. We will skip the subtraction because I want to show you about the mixed numbers now. So 5 over 6 plus 7 over 9. We already know that 9 and 6, their least common denominator is 18. So 18 divided by 6 multiplied by 5 is 15. And 18 divided by 9 is 2 times 7 is 14. And we get... 29 over 18. Again, we'll look for the greatest multiplication of 18, which is less than or equal to 29, the closest that we can get to 29. In this case, it's 18 itself. And we do 29 minus 18, and we get 11. So 18 over 18, 18 divided by 18 is 1, and the remainder is 11 and 11 over 18. So the result is 1 and 11 over 18. We can see it here on the right hand side, a whole, which is 1, and here a fraction 11 over 18. Another example, 17 over 9 plus 13 over 9. As you can see here, these are two improper fractions that we add. The denominators of both of them is 9, so obviously in the results we'll have 9. And just sum 
the numerator, 17, 17 plus 13, and we get 30 over 9. By the way, you can simplify it, but I just want to show you something here. We get the greatest multiplication of 9, which is closest to 30. In this case, it's 27. And 30 minus 27 is 3. So 27 over 9 is 3. See, 3 times 9. That's why the result will have a whole number, an integer, which is 3. And the remainder is 3 over 9, which is, of course, 1 over 3, 1 third. So we get the greatest multiplication of the denominator, which is the closest to 30, to the numerator. In this case, it's 27, which is 3 times 9. So we'll have three holes, three integer, an integer of 3. And the remainder of 3 over 9 will be here. So we have 3 and 3 over 9. 3 over 9 can be simplified, and it should be simplified. It must be simplified. It is 1 third. Divide 3 by 3, we get 1. And the 9 by 3, we get 3. So 3 and 1 third. 3 holes, 3 pizzas, 3 cakes or whatever, and 1 third. Seven over six plus five over four, the least common denominator of four and six is 12. You can see here, six equals two times three, and four equals two times two. And the number two appears both here on the right hand side and on the left, so we'll use it only once. So two times three is six times two is 12. And we know that 12 can be evenly divided by six and it can also be evenly divided by four. So this is our least common denominator. 12 divided by six is two times seven is 14 and 12 divided by four is three times five is 15 and we get 29 over 12. We look for the greatest multiplication of 12, which is the closest to 29. It's 24, which is 2 times 12. And we subtract 24 from 29, and we get 5. So the result will be 2, because we have 2 times the denominator, plus 5 over 12. Two holes and five over twelve. So now I leave you with a few exercises here. You can pause the video and try to solve them and come back and see the results. So you're back, these are the results. Seven over eight plus five over six. 24 is the this common denominator. 24 divided by 8 is 3 times 7 is 21. 24 divided by 6 is 4 times 5 is 20. You get 41 over 24. So we look for the greatest multiplication of 24, which is the closest to 41. In this case, it's 1. So the result will be 1 because 24 over 24 is 1 and 17 over 24 is the remainder. So the result is 1 and 17 over 24. 7 over 8 minus 5 over 6. See here 24 divided by 8 is 3 times 7 is 21. 24 divided by 6 is 4 times 5 is 20. You get 1 over 24. 3 over 8 plus 1 over 9, 72 is the least common denominator. It's the multiplication of 8 and 9. So 72 divided by 8 is 9 times 3 is 27. 72 divided by 9 is 8 times 1 is 8. And the result is 35 over 72. It cannot be simplified, so this is the end result. And 7, seven over 8 minus 5 over 7 
and the least common denominator of 7 and 8 is 56, they're a multiplication. 56 divided by 8 is 7, times 7 is 49, and 56 divided by 7 is 8, times 5 is 40. 49 minus 40 is 9, 9 over 56 is the end result. I hope you liked it, see you in the next lesson.